Thank you very much. As usual, great to be at YROC and great to be in person at YROC. Um, so I just quickly on the contrast issue, I think one of the things that should be good for most orthopedic surgeons is, really, is to just say MRI to look for infection or whatever else use contrast as needed and leave that to the discretion of the radiologist because oftentimes we can make the diagnosis without contrast. Okay, and that comes to the next topic, communication is the key to misdiagnosis. <laughs> so um, I thought I would just take a minute and do this a little bit differently. So uh, first I'd talk about what is a diagnosis. If we look at the Merriam-Webster dictionary or the Oxford dictionary definition, it's a bit different. But when I think about radiological diagnosis, I think it is a condition that should ordinarily have been identified and characterized using imaging. And therefore, a misdiagnosis is a failure to identify and characterize a condition using imaging. Um, how do misdiagnoses occur? They typically occur for a variety of reasons. The first is that the eyes see what the mind knows, and usually the mind knows less, and therefore you don't see what you're supposed to see. The second thing is the eyes see, but the mind does not know. So you pick up a finding, but you don't know what to make of it. And this is usually the case where the mind has not seen enough of these cases. Um, the third one is where the mind sees, but the eyes don't know. So you know what you're supposed to look for, you just don't know how to look for it. And the last one is the mind knows, the eyes see, but still we miss it. And that's usually because of inattention or haste. Now, all of these issues can be addressed by knowledge, us learning more things, experience, us getting feedback, us learning from other people's experiences, and one of the big issues that we always talk about is clinical information. Um, what is the responsibility and blame situation when it comes to misdiagnoses? Who can misdiagnose? Anyone, right? Uh, who is to blame? Obviously not me. Uh, anybody else is to blame. Um, what are some common areas of radiologic misdiagnosis and how do they occur? So for example, if we look here, uh, we see the I see what the mind knows. In here, in an orthopedic surgeon situation, you'd only look where there are symptoms, right? And here, you typically look at a hip or you'd miss a sacroiliac joint condition. You'd miss a root men meniscal tear because you don't know how to look for it. And here, for a radiologist, we don't know what to look. We get an image. We have no context of where to look in that image. Sometimes we don't have the awareness of what to look for and where to look for. And here, we would miss fractures on this basis. Similarly here, the eyes see, but the mind doesn't know. Here we just jump at any obvious finding, um, and then we don't really think on, on, and analyze it further. So a facet osteophyte will be felt to be a facet cyst. You'll mistake tumor as infection, bone marrow edema as AVN. Here you can overcall findings. We call partial tear, CL tears. We call anterior and lateral meniscal tears. We you know, mess up with post-operative imaging. And then finally here, the mind knows, but the eyes don't see. We only look at those things that we know how to look at. So we don't sometimes look at areas that we're supposed to look at, or we don't know what the findings or the disease should look like. Um, and here we're unable to make a finding from inexperience or poor imaging technique, right? One of the key features over here, remember, for post-operative imaging, which Shitij had asked me to speak of specifically, is that with post-operative imaging, there's only one important question to ask a surgeon. Is this your surgery, or is this from somewhere else? Once you have that, everything else falls into place. So here's the current state of radiology and orthopedic communications. You know, it's pretty much like Batman versus Superman. So clinician is king. No, image matters. Your symptoms don't, symptoms don't match your findings. It says, please correlate clinically. You say, what is this? Please correlate clinically. We say, my job is to report all the findings. You are the clinician. You correlate clinically. And then finally, you are humbug. I just need these images for insurance. You are humbug. I just need to fill up my scanner. So this is the current state of radiology and orthopedic communications. Uh, but let's take a quick look at errors in radiology. So we've actually looked at this. We have an error rate of about 3 to 5%. Uh, usually our errors are because of under-reading, uh, missed findings. Uh, we have a satisfaction of search issue, so we make one finding, we don't look at other findings. We miss findings in the corners. Uh, sometimes we just put findings together, but we have faulty reasoning associated with it. Um, we just follow what the old radiologist said without looking anything further. Um, we don't look at the priors and then we don't have adequate clinical history are these situations. But we do know that from many, many studies that in radiology we are much, um, we are much, much better off if we get clinical information. So having clinical information allows us to be more accurate, more confident, more relevant, and does not affect our timeliness. Um, but what do we do when we get clinical information? So they surveyed radiologists who were looking at uh, imaging, uh, and they said, you know, more than three quarters of the time, they said we need more clinical information. 80, almost 90% of the radiologists said if we had clinical information, we would give, do a better job. 
But how often do they access clinical information? Even when it's available, less than 15% of the time. And that's primarily, they use the previous report because that's the easiest thing to get. And it's primarily because it takes too much time and it's too inconvenient to access the clinical information. Um, so, but let's look back at orthopedic surgeons also. We are all no different. So I could not find any papers that talk about orthopedic misdiagnosis in imaging. And yet, there is an AOS statement that says orthopedic surgeon, the quality and accuracy of imaging studies and integration performed by orthopedists are consistently high. Okay, so I, I love this. This is why I love orthopedic surgeons. I want to be one when I grow up. Um, and there's little to no trace of orthopedic, that an orthopedic imaging evaluation interpretation is available. I don't see any report signed by an orthopedic surgeon ever, but I, I don't see them document a note ever, but they are extremely you know, accurate and appropriate. So we sort of looked at this, somebody's looked at, you know, orthopedic surgeons do not consult radiology reports, is this fact or fiction? And here they basically dis discovered that in x-rays, about 50% of the time they look at the reports in their entirety no matter what, but 50%, you know, 30% of the time if they need to, and 16% of the time they'll just say bugger it, right? On CT, 75% of the time they look at the report, at least the body or the conclusion, uh, and on MR, 90% of them look at it. So again, just showing you what the degree of understanding of this is. Now, what's your diagnosis from this? You know, how much value is there to the report? Is it a lot or a little? And it turns out that basically, according to the study, orthopedic surgeons do read radiology reports. I'm not sure if that's your diagnosis, but that's sort of the situation we're dealing with. Now, why don't they read the reports? Because they don't have time. I mean, seriously, you send for a test, but you don't have time to read the results of that test. Um, they're not on time. We have the fastest turnaround time for reports in India as compared to anywhere else in the world. Although this study is not from India, it's from Europe. And then the other things are not relevant, no trust, and too long. What they want is reports that are fast. They want more measurements. I don't know how we can give more measurements when you're not even clear on what measurements you want amongst yourselves half the time, right? I mean, everybody has different things that they want measured. Um, and then they want key images, so we're doing all of this stuff. There's some who want, non-orthopedic findings, and I have a question on whether these are really orthopedic surgeons, but let's not go there. So the problem really I'm trying to demonstrate here is that, yes, radiologists make interpretations. We can definitely be helped with like information. Similarly, orthopedic surgeons need help with imaging, but they decide when they do and don't want it. The reason we're not using each other well is because it's just cumbersome to use each other. We don't have convenient methods to do this. So what we've done is we've created a software solution that allows us to get all the information available at our fingertips when we're looking at scans. We give, you know, we allow ourselves to, you know, to combine patients together so that we can see old studies and current studies. We give this radiologist convenience while reporting. We give this access to orthopedic surgeons so that they can log in and, and, and do stuff. Um, and so basically the, the long and short of this talk is that we need each other. We need collaboration that builds experience, um, but we have very few communication tools that allow us to do this regularly. And technology that facil facilitates this, I think, is the key to how we're going to solve this problem in the long term. So I'll stop with that, and I'm sorry for overshooting by 30 seconds. <laughs>